niggas envy, uh Blinky got the stiffy, uh Got the blinky, uh Drum it, hold the spiffy, uh You put some on such a heavy Yo, what's good? And this is the Real Lil Benji channel, and we about to air this bitch out. So today, the topic is the first night I danced. Yo, so many people been asking me about it. What was my first night like? Um, what did it all do? How was it? Was I scared, nervous, blah, 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 blah. So we finna go over how my first night was, how it changed over time, and then how I got used to it. Um... My first night dancing, being a dancer was literally my first night being in a strip club. I had never been in a strip club before dancing in one, so I didn't know what the tipping was like. I didn't know the atmosphere. I didn't know nothing. I was, like, oblivious to a lot of shit. So it was like, okay, cool. Um, yeah. At first, I thought I was going to be nervous um, getting undressed in front of other girls, but that wasn't shit. That was, was like a, a locker room at high school, like, okay, get dressed. Mm, but then when I got on the floor, it was, like, different because I'm a really anti-social ass person. I don't like talking to people. I don't like being in people's faces. And it was just, like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Like, it wasn't that I didn't know what I was supposed to do. It was just, like, okay, what's next? And, uh, you know, I was just, like, I literally kind of hid in the corner all night, like, I literally hid, like, I didn't go talk to nobody, I didn't dance with nobody, I literally, like, hid, and, you know, it was just, like, I don't know if it was just because I was looking out, checking out the atmosphere, like, seeing what it was about, but, like, literally, like, for the first three weekends of me dancing, um, I didn't make shit. I was dancing at Vila Chicago at the time, I was paying $150 on a Friday and a Saturday to dance, including tip out. And I wasn't making shit back. Like, I wouldn't even make my tip in back. I was making the, um, what is it? I didn't make the fucking, um, tip. I didn't make the tip in, nor did I make the tip out, out, you know. Because at V-Live, they franchise is known for tip in and tip out. Um, but yeah, I didn't make that shit. Like, it was nerve-wracking. Like, I was just like... This was my plan Z. Stripping was plan Z. I had already went through, like, plan A, B, C, D, E. And I literally skipped the rest of the alphabet to go to plan Z. Like, that was, like, my backup, 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 backup. backup. Like, if I ain't had nowhere else to turn, that was the plan. And it was, like, of course you nervous because, like, when you first start, you don't, you, like, you really get to hear people. Like, people really be talking about you while you're on the floor. These people just be saying it out loud, say it in your face. They don't care. It ain't them, so they don't give a fuck. And it was just, like, I was a little bit nervous. I, I was, like, staying out the way. I didn't want no smoke. And then, plus, I I had only been to Chicago maybe a couple times before I was, there, like, really there. I've never drove to Chicago really by myself. Like, I drove there by myself and danced there by myself. And it was like, okay, what the fuck? But after, like I said, after the fourth, like, by the third weekend, after that weekend, I was like, yo, I'm going home with some money. Y'all got me fucked up. I'm not leaving this bitch time. make some money, make my tip in, tip out, and make a little bit of profit, you know. And um, eventually I did. But it was just like you had to learn the hustle. You had to learn the move. You had to learn and I learned by watching other girls. I learned by seeing how they talk, how they move, how they dress, how they carry themselves. And I seen the girls that spent money on the hair, the outfits, and was on top. You know, that's what I seen. Oh, you got to spend money and make money. You got to look the part, you know. And I didn't really look the part at the time. I didn't get no dance outfits until maybe, like I said, the, the, the fourth week of me dancing because I actually made some money. Like... It was like, what the fuck? Like, I, when I first started dancing in Chicago, I had seen so much shit. Like, Chicago really, you know, molded me to be an a, a aggressive, dance, a aggressive dancer because up there, they 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 on sight. Like, it ain't no, oh, we finna argue and da-da-da. Like, most, most of the bitches that talk that shit with that shit. Like, and the other half of them ain't with the shit. They just talk out the side of their neck. But at all, a lot of places I dance, Chicago really, you know, the Chicago clubs, that the bitches really be on that fuckery. You know, if they know you a weak bitch, if they know you a new bitch, if they know you a goofy bitch, they gonna try you. 
and you at that point have to let you, let it be known you're not the one. Like I remember a time I, I was dancing and um you know V Live they take your money after your stage set or what money you make on the floor, they take it and they lock it up. And that night I knew I only had one bag, one bag that I made on my own. That's it. I didn't get the they didn't put me on stage with no other dancers. You know, I didn't get to get on stage that night because it was a weekend. I don't know what the fuck happened. You know, I when I first started, I wasn't getting on stage. You know, they wasn't putting me on stage, so it was just like, whatever, you know. And the one little bag that I did make, you know, all of a sudden it disappeared. It grew legs. And I remember that bag because they told me, always write the permanent marker on your wrist, on your, on your little band, because they gave you a band to make sure you paid. Mark it on there, and you know how many bags you got. Nah, you know, it's getting to the end of the night. They passing out bags, and then everybody packed bags passed out but mine. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? They, we ain't see you make no bag. What are you talking about? You didn't have no bag. I said, bro, I'm not going to be all the way three hours away from home in another city with a bunch of strangers trying to fight and argue over no fucking bag. I know I made a bag. The fuck run them cameras back. Like, don't. Like, it was just. When I first started Be Live Chicago, it was. Bitches was stealing, stealing. Like, I, I seen that shit personally. You know, it was just like. You you had to stand your ground. And I, from that point, literally, I had to watch who bagged my money and who put my money over the wall. I did not play that shit. Like, literally, if, you, if I got a bad girl, bad boy, or whatever, and I seen them pick my money up, I take the bag from them. I double knot it, I write my name all over the bag, I give it back to him, and I follow him to the locked up room and watch them throw my bag over. Because it was just like, a lot of girls was like, if you don't watch them, this, these bitches will steal from you. They will take your money, you're a new girl, you don't know no better, or you don't know how shit go. It's a lot of greedy bitches in this shit. They want all the money. Bitches don't get, bitches be selling pussy and still want all the money. The fuck, the nigga that came in there and threw you a thousand dollars and they still want to steal. Like, who does that? Y'all bitches be saying y'all make all this money. Y'all got the bag. Y'all got the this. But y'all always stealing. My thing since I've been an entertainer, I do, I don't have to steal. Like, if, I'm, if I didn't make shit that night, I didn't make shit that night. It wasn't meant for me to make shit that night. I stayed out the way. It ain't got shit to do with me what you made. If, it, if we ain't splitting the bag, it ain't got shit to do with me. Like, motherfuckers, oh, we all steal. No, bitch, all of us don't steal. If we don't make shit, we don't make shit. You know, and it's been hella times where I did not make shit when I was first dancing. It's been times where I was in, in mid-dancing and I didn't make shit. It all depends on the atmosphere of the club, what you destined to make, your hustle, and everything like that. And my type of dancing, my type of hustling is different from other people's. You know, depending how I feel, depending on if I'm going to be bothered with these niggas, depending on, it depends on whatever. I'm not a real, oh, I'm finna be on your face, tell you I love you, and try to finesse you, and tell you I'm finna go home with you. I'm not that type of bitch, bro. So many people be like, oh, I just tell these niggas I'm finna go home with man. man, these niggas crazy nowadays. These niggas will wait outside the club for you and, and snatch you up, and then nobody gets to hear from your ass again. Type of crazy. And I ain't with that. I tell niggas all the time, niggas will come up to me, talking about how much money I got to spend in order to get you to come home with me. And I told these niggas, I'm good. Like, the other day, this shit happened at the flame. I told him, lie to nigga. Dude was like, shit, I can't even know him but respect it. You feel me? Like, niggas, if you tell a nigga you not fucking, you just not fucking. And it's simple as that. But some people feel like they obligated. I, you know, that's not my place. Whatever, however hustle, you got to hustle, that's you. But don't sit here and, and belittle other motherfuckers because you the one that's selling pussy. And we out here trying to make an honest living out of this shit. Like, y'all hoes be out here trying to be all high sedity and classy. It always be the bitches that selling pussy that be all high sedity and nose stuck up. Like, bitch, we know you selling pussy. What you, what your nose stuck up for? Everybody had that little, that little pussy. Like, don't know what, what you, what you got your nose stuck up for. Like, it, 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 like I've noticed since I've been dancing, wherever I've traveled, I've, like I said, I've traveled to many cities, many states, and I've danced with a lot of different girls, and. Is usually the most stuck up bitch, usually the one selling pussy. And I'm not talking about stuck up because you know you 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 know you got your swag or whatever, or you stuck up because you known on TV or whatever. I'm talking about no. I'm talking about you are unpleasantly stuck up, like it's uncomfortable 
stuck up, like disrespectful stuck up, like, and I just be like, y'all hoes need to calm that shit down, like, don't nobody give a fuck about you selling pussy, bro, tell your pussy, we, let us, let's, let us hustle the way we know how to hustle, but don't sit here talking about, oh, that's a hustle, no, bitch, selling pussy is not, all you gotta do is lay on your back and open your legs and let the nigga nut on you, that's it. That's it. You not doing no backflips on the dick. You ain't got to do nothing. You just got to lay there. You feel me? Like, don't let these girls lie to y'all. Like, if you feel like selling pussy, that's your business. But don't sit here and talk about somebody else that's not selling pussy. And don't talk about they pockets because that's they pockets. You feel me? Like, don't do that. It be so many bitches out here that be just uh, annoying as fuck. You know, but after a while, like, I danced in Chicago for like six to eight months. And I was making good, I was making decent money. I was only dancing on the weekend at the time because I was going to school at the time. You know, so it was extra money. It was an extra, I would get from an extra three to maybe six, seven, eight hundred dollars a week. You know, extra. You know, depending on the weekend. Sometimes I ain't come, I came back home with an extra three. Sometimes I came home with this extra seven. You know, because I only worked two days out the week. Friday and Saturday. And them days be so heckin', especially at V-Live. Like, it. It, it was, it was a, um, it's a system there. It's a system. All, all these clubs got systems. Don't sit here and just think it's like bittersweet. Like some clubs, you can go in that bitch, earn your respect the right way and really get, you know, really fuck with people. Once people see you can hustle, make money, you get your respect and motherfuckers don't fuck with you. Some clubs, regardless of what you do, how you hustle, how you try to get your respect, they don't give a fuck because they got some um, politic ass shit going on. All clubs have politics, but you got to pick which club where you can move in the politics. Like Blue Flame, they politics ain't even... You come in there, bitch, and you earn your respect. Motherfuckers come in there and see you working your ass off, you're going to get tipped. You're going to make something. If you're in that bitch busting your ass, and I mean, sometimes it's some nights where I have to bust my ass to make a bag. I ain't mad. It is what it is. You know? Like, if like I, if motherfucker give me the opportunity to get back on stage and I was already on stage, I'm taking that shit, bro. I don't, I'm not finna be like, I ain't finna get on stage because all these other girls don't want to get on stage. Man, fuck y'all. I'm not y'all. Y'all might not think no money up there, but I'm going to make these niggas tip me. You gotta make motherfuckers tip you, bro. Like you gotta, you gotta put a pep in your step. You just, ah, oh, yeah, he not tipping. I'm just stop. No, you gotta do a little extra, and then after that little extra, if he ain't doing nothing, move around. Like, so after that little time of me dancing in Chicago, I finally learned how to, you know, dress, how to carry myself, and shit like that. And eventually, um, it was around that New Year's. I have, I felt like I should be making more money. Like, I looked at myself and was like, I can't keep dancing here. I'm not making enough money. This ain't enough money for me no more. What What is this? You know, and then I had finished school, you know, that December, or whatever, around the New Year, Christmas time, I had finished school so I could dance more days out the week. But it was just like, it wasn't jumping during the week. That club wasn't jumping during the week. It was only jumping on the weekends, and that was it. When I was working there, it was only jumping on the weekends. You know, so... It was just like, eventually I started talking to other people about it. They was like, you should go to St. Louis. I'm like, St. Louis? Yeah, you know, da, 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 da. I was just hearing so many stories about St. Louis. Never been to St. Louis till I started dancing. You know, never never been there, never been to a strip club up there, none of that. They were just like, you're pretty, you're light-skinned, you know how to dance, they gonna tip you. I'm like, oh, okay. So, next thing next. After a while of contemplating, um... What is it? Stalling, procrastinating. I eventually uh, made enough courage or whatever and packed up my shit and went to St. Louis and started dancing. I started dancing at um, Bottoms Up. That's one of, like, I guess it's one of the OG clubs. Like, that club, club has been open for forever. It still is open, you know. And when I got there, it was so motherfucking ratchet. I ain't even gonna cap. Coming from V-Live and going to bottoms up it was like v live had good lighting you know had to light up stage and you know had the love you did you know i was like i was glamorized it but it was it wasn't enough money in there for me not for me you know i don't know what it was for other bitches i mean they still there so it must have been something but it wasn't for me so i had to move around so i went to bottoms up um and it was like it was when i seen it it was just like 
I was like, what the fuck? Like, cause I came in there all dressed up and shit. Cause you know, every time you come to try to get a job, you gotta come in that bitch looking like a whole snack and shit. And I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Came in there like, I'm trying to work. You know, gave me a tour and shit. And it was just like, all right, cool. Did the tour and was like, fuck it, they, all right, well, you trying to work? All right, I'm trying to work tonight. All right, here. You know, sign this, sign this, and get ID, die ID, and then boom, I was dancing. First night I worked at Bottoms Up, I made the G by myself. I didn't dance with nobody um, just yet, and um, I was cool. And I was like, cool. I ended up leaking with a couple girls there, you know. They was cool people at the time. I was staying, I ended up staying with them at they, um, they loft and shit. But then I eventually, like, faded back because they had tendencies that I didn't have. And I'm the type of person, if you have tendencies that I don't have and they're toxic, I can't be around y'all. Like, it don't be nothing personal. I just don't want to pick up them tendencies myself, you know. And then eventually, you know, I end up, I was at Bottoms Up for like two months. And then the next thing you know, Onyx opened. Onyx opened in St. Louis. And I opened up with, uh, as one of their main girls there. You know, they was like, oh, yeah, a lot of people talking about you here, you know, and a lot of people recommended you, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, cool. So I opened up with them. It was cool. You know, when Honest first opened up, it was it was, it was was cake season. It was like, God damn, it was points where I was dancing that bitch. I had one stage set to myself, and I, I remember one stage set. My shit was covered, so covered in money, so much money on my motherfucking stage set. It was like 15 or plus. Like, that shit was love. I didn't even work the floor, like... I worked the floor sometimes, like, when I was at Onyx, I started, st I really slowed down on working the floor. I was, I started to become more of a stage girl. And then eventually, after a few months there, like, shit started going on, shit started to happen, you know, the strip club shit, you know, the, the politics ass shit. And then eventually, I was just like, I started seeing other clubs on Instagram, and I started traveling. Then I ended up going to Detroit, trying it there, and went to Memphis, I, Birmingham, and I just started traveling, you know, I just started traveling, like, it took, but all of them took guts to go to these cities, because I was going by myself, I heard these scary ass stories about people getting snatched up, these girls being sex trafficked, these niggas following them, like, I used to be terrified, because you never know, people watch you in a strip club and be plotting on you the whole time, so you gotta carry yourself a certain way, and move a certain way, with me, I don't drink while I'm at work, I don't. You might catch me taking a sip every blue, every pink blue moon is not a habit for me. I cannot drink at the club because I need to be self-aware of what's going on. You know, I need to see what's going on because you never know. You in there making your money. You making a bag and there's one broke nigga in there that's been watching you all night. And he hangs around in the parking lot waiting for you. You know, you never know because all clubs don't got good security. All clubs don't have, you know, even have security in the parking lot after the club closed. That, that's just the truth. So you got to move a certain type of way. And you got to watch. You got to be alert. You can't just be riding around this motherfucker and think somebody not going to follow you. But especially if you got out of town plates. These motherfuckers going to be like, who the fuck is this? I ain't never seen her before. That might be a lick. You know, you can't expect to go in the club and every girl in the strip club is going to be your friend. It's not It's not that type of feel. This a, she trying to take money out of my mouth type of feel. Eventually, you might get cool with the girls. You get casual. You get cold. You know, you get, you be cool. But you got to understand, some of these bitches is in savage mode. They in, they in hunger game mode. They going to do whatever the fuck they got to do to get that back. And that means throwing a complete stranger under the motherfucking bus, they are going to do it. Period. You know. And like I said, um... You know, in Chicago, I had somebody up there. I, I had two people I was staying with up there. And they was they still, to this day, I'm still cool with them, you know. When I go up there, it's nothing but love. And um, St. Louis, I, I got love for people up there, too. But, you know, you just got to watch motherfuckers. I don't be, you know, I learned in St. Louis that bitches really not your friend. Like, in, in Chicago, I knew the bitches were my friend. But it's like, really, in St. Louis, I learned them bitches is not my friend. You know, when it was to the point where I was getting, you know, phone calls that, you know, and and getting recordings from people lives that was just sitting there dogging the fuck out of me and shit. It was just like I stopped being friendly and I stopped being, you know, 
like how I was. Like, cause I don't be on no bullshit. Like, I talk my bullshit cause I talk shit. And that's who the fuck I am. If you don't like it, you can block me, leave the fuck alone. But it's just like hoes will sit here and just mad dog you. And then being your face the next day talking about Instagram and my followers and all that. So when I went to St. Louis, I didn't have that many followers. I, was, I had like maybe a thousand followers. Then started turning up and that bitch got a couple more thousand followers. Then Onyx opened up, got a couple more thousand followers. Then I ended up started traveling, got more followers. Then when I traveled and was getting put on these strip club pages, then I'm getting followers from the cities that I was staying in or being in. Then I'm getting followers from all over. So when you be on my page and be like, oh, she got Detroit love. She got Chicago love. She got St. Louis love. She got Atlanta love. She got Miami love. She got Dallas love. She got Little Rock love. Because them the places I have to dance, you know. And it was just like, you got to come in that bitch on hunger mode. Like, you can't come in there thinking that everybody is out to help you. This is This industry is all about money. Money, money, money. Sorry to say it. Don't want to hurt your feelings, but it's money. You know, you got to know how to play the cards right. You got to know how to play your position. You, you take care of people, and people will take care of you. And I mean that with the... Tipping people, tipping the regulars, you know, the security, all that. Tipping everybody and make sure everybody cool because they're going to make sure you're extra straight because you're putting money in their pocket. You know, bitches be like, I ain't tipping him. I ain't tipping him. But you got to understand, you, I, tip, I, I ain't going to cap. I tip security guards. I, I, I tip bottle girls. I tip all that because it's going to be a day that I need them to go grab me something or do something for me. And they know that I'm going to be good for it. You feel me? It's going to be a day that I need something. They're going to be good for it. So... I love them, you know. I, I hear a couple of dollars. It ain't much, but it's something. It's more than what these other bitches giving them. Because some of these bitches don't give motherfucking shit. They be selfish and shit. They greedy, you know. And I tell people, you be greedy in this shit, it's going to you, it's gonna be your demise. It's gonna be, I promise you, if you come into this stripper shit, it will be your demise if you come in this bitch being greedy. It will fuck you up. Because some girls come in and shit, and then they get a taste of a little bit of money. Then they get a little more taste. Then they get a little more taste. And then they do something stupid, blow their money, whatever they do. And now they starving. They hungry. They want more money. And then here come the nigga. He coming in with whatever money he got, and he trying to fuck. Then you got the other motherfuckers out here. Then you got these niggas that be these niggas and these females that I will pimp your ass the fuck out. You feel me? You just got to know better. Some of these girls be so young and don't know no better because don't nobody else tell them. Like, when I started dancing, you know, it was like I wasn't really, I didn't have no real mentor in this dancing shit. I had to learn off of trial and error and talking to these other, 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 other strippers. Like, for real, like, talking to these other strippers. I had to learn. I didn't have no mentor where, oh, yeah, girl, go here, get this. Oh, yeah, girl, I got you. Do your makeup. Oh, yeah, girl. That wasn't the case in my situation. It wasn't. When I first started, bitches wasn't trying to be my friend. Bitches wasn't trying to put me on. Like, I had to really start poking and prodding that shit just to get outfits, just to get shoes. And then I had to start upping my hair and learn how to do my makeup and, and all types of shit. You feel me? Like, it wasn't like some girls come in, they come with their friends or, or an OG stripper bring them in. Or, you know, I didn't come in that way. I came in by myself. You know, I met a lot of good people since I've been dancing. I've met a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of bad people. And I'm telling you, sometimes you meet, you meet these bad people and you don't escape. So you got to be careful who you talk to. You got to be careful who you uh, get a relationship with. You got to be careful who you build a connection with because some people will build a, a connection with you because they see you as another dollar sign. They see you as another way to get money, you know. And I used to tell people, like, if you trying to become an entertainer and you never strip, you never done none of this, you got to ask yourself this. Do you want to be labeled that for the rest of your life? Because once you cross that line of entertainer, that's what they're going to see you as for the rest of your life. Regardless of what the fuck you do, they still going to bring the stripper shit up. You see, there's so many famous people out here that used to strip, and they still, regardless of their achievements, uh, regardless of what they've done, regardless of what they brought to the table, regardless of whatever the fuck they did that was magnificent, they still bring out 
you was a stripper, we don't give a fuck. So if you really want to cross that line and be labeled that for the rest of your life, then go ahead. I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta take that shit with a grain of salt. But if you're not ready to be labeled like that, be a bottle girl or a waitress. Try that out first. You know, if I knew I could try out being a bottle girl or a waitress or a bartender first, I probably would have done that first. But me, I never waited on people. I never poured drinks. You know, I didn't even know what a bottle girl was. So at that point, it was just like all I knew was stripper and. That's that's what I went to for the extra money, you know. But, like, a lot of people be encouraging the shit, and I just be telling people, like, you got to know what you're going and getting yourself into because I promise you, you come into this shit thinking, oh, yeah, it's going to be easy. Yeah, I'm a bad bitch. That, that's cool. That's, that's, that's nice. That's hunkadory and a piece of cake. But this shit will corrupt you straight to your soul, bro. These bitches get corrupt, then they get on drugs, and they just start selling pussy, and they lose themselves, and then it's 10 years that flew by, and they, they can't figure out what the fuck going on, and they lost. And then they want to blame everybody else for their fucking problems. We ain't got shit to do with that, fam. You had the same deck of cards we did, and you dealt your shit. You know, I know I ain't had the hardest life compared to some of these other entertainers, but at the same time, I planned my shit out. I planned it. You know, I came in the game with one goal, and it wasn't to be friends with bitches. It wasn't to fucking find a man. It wasn't none of that. It was coming this bitch, hustle, and get your money, and go to fuck home, like, all in one. I didn't come in here for none of that extra-ass bullshit. Some clubs, I really don't even talk. I come in there, be like a ghost, make my money, and dip out. You know, because people don't know me, people don't know how I move and don't know how I talk. Sometimes, some clubs I go into and don't even talk at all. They just see me make money, and then they talk to me. You know, you just got to know how to carry yourself. A lot of y'all girls coming into this shit, not experiencing life, and not getting a regular job, and knowing how to, you know, really do some regular ass shit. Y'all be seeing the glamorous life of Instagram and what we put on there. Y'all got to understand, this is Instagram. This shit is for show. This is just for show, politics, money, whatever. Mother's like, oh, you got bands, you caked up. I'm good, I'm decent. I ain't saying I'm rich and I ain't saying I'm poor, I'm blessed. But some of y'all be out here, yeah, I'm finna be a stripper, you know. I seen my friend doing it, you know. You don't know what your friend doing. You do not know if your friend sucking dick until the, uh, her, her, she get locked, y'all. You don't know that. You don't know what your friend doing. You not there when she make the money. Some, I'm not saying that all bitches is fucking for money. I'm just saying... You got to understand, this this shit, this industry alone will fuck you up if you don't come in this way. If you don't come the right way, if you don't step the right way. You know, and then I just see it nowadays, like, everybody want to be a stripper now. Like, I became a stripper because it was the only choice I had to get out of debt, to keep my car, to fix my car, to, you know, keep money in my house while I was going to school at the time. If I did not have to be an entertainer... I probably would have not been an entertainer because I had too many other tricks of the trade to do. I would have just worked a regular job because I was a regular, regular person before this. I was regular as fuck. This entertainment, like, really, like, really flipped me, you know, and I'm still getting used to being um, not normal anymore. I'm still getting used to it because I walk around this bitch humble as hell. Like, I just, I don't walk around here like, oh, you famous. You got this followers. You got this. You be with these people. You be with that people. I don't walk around here like that. I walk around like I'm still normal, but in retrospect, I can't walk around here like I'm normal because I'm not normal. I'm not a nine to five person anymore. You know, I can't do what I used to do anymore. I have to come to an understanding that it's more than a normal life now. So it's just like, if you're going to cross that line of being an entertainer, you got to know what the fuck you're getting yourself into. If you don't, do your research, do your homework. You know, like I said, if you ain't got to dance, don't. I, that's my opinion, don't. Because some of y'all fuck around and fuck your whole lives up because y'all just want to think it's sweet for a couple dollars. Trust me. If you ain't no real hustler and, and you you just... You're not a real hustler. It's going to be hard unless you sell a pussy. So if you sell a pussy, go ahead. That's your business. But don't belittle nobody else for being a hustler. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video on that note. I need you to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I need you to turn your notification on. So 
I'll see you in my next video. So.